average 133, high single 196, best triple is 499, bowling at Park Place and on the Traveling League as well. Two of the best for you this afternoon, it's the semis of the TOC, let's get right to it. We're coming back to Lita Lanes for Candlepin Stars and Strikes right after this. Well, we began our Tournament of Champions with six great bowlers. We're down to three. And it's the top three seeds. Jeff Surrett will face Gary Carrington with Sean Baker in the wings. John Winchell had a nice run winning a couple of matches, beating Dave Hodge and Rich Lottie before he ran into Jeff Surrett. It sets us up for this afternoon's match, the semifinals of the Tournament of Champions on WNDS. And Jeff Surrett will be first to bowl here this afternoon. And we're ready to go. He'd certainly like to make it two consecutive years at the top of the TOC, no doubt, but we won't know that for another two weeks. Trying to break up the foot, he does. The five-pin falls. He's got a clean shot at the ten-pin. All the wood is out of the way. So a spare to begin. The young Jeff Surratt, who had a uh, triple last week of 4.03, beating John Winchell, who began in the sixth spot and moved up very nicely. And there's the diamond or dinner bucket, as it's often referred, on the right-hand side. Three, five, six, and nine. This is week number four with one week to go. Semi-final round action, and they're all gone. The nine is the last to go with back-to-back -back spares for defending tournament champion Jeff Surratt. There's another look at it. As you can see, the pin comes off the right sideboard and takes down the nine. Good start for Surratt. A couple of marks. You're gonna need him. Puts the pressure on Carrington right away, but Carrington thrives on pressure. He's won a couple of tournament of champions along the way. 2001, he was the number one seed, defeating Mike Morgan, who was victimized by Jeff Surratt last year. Mike Morgan's played the bridesmaid a number of times along the way. And that's the kind of bowling that Jeff Surratt will encounter this afternoon, is you see Gary Carrington. What a shot. Gary's 47 years old. Right in the pocket. Can he break up the split? Gary's fun to watch. He was hoping that that 10 pin was going to get wiped out by that rolling pin, but it didn't happen. Gary's kind of like when you go to a football game, a lot of people watch the ball and they don't watch the offensive line play and play away from the ball. Gary's fun to watch. Will it go? Oh, look at that shot by Gary Carrington. Oh. Are we having fun yet? Look at that pin come flying across and kick out the 10 pin. You would expect nothing less from these two guys. Here's Jeff Surratt. Right on the head pin, puts nine in the mark. Looking for some bonus money. Right on it, three marks in a row, $50 in bonus money. We are, what, at 575 on the triple strike jackpot? Sounds about right. We gave away six and a quarter three weeks ago to John Winchell. Jeff Surrett, another good first ball. And another spare opportunity with the wood set up nicely. Four marks in a row for wow. Jeff Surrett starting out. These guys are okay, huh? Would you say? They're among the best. And Sean Baker is right up there with them. This is a great threesome to watch. Slug it out to the $2,000 top prize next week. Gary Carrington on lane 34. Right in the pocket. Can he break up the split? No, but the wood is okay. He likes Gary doing, directing the wood a little bit. The nine and the ten. There it is. It's like a heavyweight fight, isn't it? What it is. They're just standing in the center of the ring and slugging it out. Great spare shot by Gary Carrington. 
$50 in bonus money for Carrington. Right on the head pin again. Can he break up the split? No, he cannot. No wood left on the deck. This is a tough one. A very serious threat to the end of his bonus money run now. We've seen him make tougher shots oh, yes. than this. Not going to happen. Finally, an open frame. Somebody played boxes. Yeah. That'll be a nine box for Gary Carrington. So Jeff Surrett will have the early lead with four marks in a row. But not by much. Put one in the spare. Good second ball. Gets him out of trouble. And he's open for the first time. Jeff Surrett, 21 years old. Recent graduate of Tewksbury High School, a three-year graduate of Tewksbury High School, works at Candlewood Lanes. Strike for Jeff on lane 33. Well, I imagine he uses that to his advantage, does a little open Probably bowling. practice a little bit. Yeah. I'll bet. His father, Tom, is here. His mother, Jean. Brother, Scott, 11. Sister, Kristen, 19. Girlfriend, Kristen. Lots of Kristens in his life. Gary Carrington tries to get back on track, and he does! <laughs> what a pleasure. We really don't have to say anything, no. you know? Just turn, put the camera on and sit back and Set. enjoy. Show the score every once in a while and let the, uh, let the bowlers tell the story. Just doesn't get any better than this. Right on the head pin again. And a piece of wood to help out. Now which way does he go? The left wood or the right wood? I would think he goes to the left wood. I agree. He's still studying the shot, though. Eyeballing it. Second split in the last three boxes for Carrington. Right side of the left wood is where I would go with it. He went to the left side of that wood and didn't make the shot. Puts nine in the strike. And a nine box. 89 through six. Just a couple of moments, you'll see uh, the uh, seventh and eighth boxes of the lutzk morin Rugs match this year at uh, Pilgrim Lanes in Haverhill. I think I'm up 22 pins on you. 22 pins, and after four years, We've each won twice. So this is the rubber match of five years. Ooh. Does the winner get to retire the trophy? Well, we'll let the winner make that, that call. <laughs> Whoever he may be. Ten box for Jeff. <laughs> 101 through seven. We'll get to some of your letters and emails. There were a whole bunch of them between tapings. That's a good first ball. Watch it again. Even in slow-mo, they go down really fast. Five-pin last to go. Carrington needs to put a markup on the board now as uh, Surrett has two strikes in the last three boxes. That's the four horsemen right side for Gary Carrington. Wood will not be a factor, even though there is some on the deck. Jim Mazzaffaro from Lemonster writes in one of his, uh, a lot of suggestions, and one of his suggestions is that a bowler should not be able to appear in two consecutive tapings. Why not? If he qualifies and... Oh, it's, you know what? It's harder to qualify than it is once you get here to win because there's so many more very good bowlers. 
And he also says we should have a lob line judge. We talked about that last week. The bowlers police themselves. We don't have an awful lot of lob, lobs. And we talked about the lob line judge, Ralph Stewart, who was on the O Channel 5 show. But the bowlers don't seem to think that it's needed. No. It hasn't been an issue. You know what? It's an old-time thing. It's done. You don't need it if you've got good bowlers that are professional. And they are. Jim Mazafaro of Lemonster, thanks for writing in. Appreciate hearing from you. Keep on watching. Candlepin stars and strikes. Gary played the wood, didn't get the bounce. So that'll be three opens in a row for Gary Carrington, and Jeff Surrett works on a strike. And a nine box. So he's at 106, and Surrett's at 111, plus a couple of balls to fill the strike. Look at this. Oh, my. But at least he's got another ball to fill the strike. He had a one in a spare earlier with a pick. And he got three down with that one. And he ends up putting six in the strike. And a nine box. So he's at 126 through nine. So they've cooled off a little bit after a red-hot start. That's off the head pin, but he got a pretty good bounce, didn't he? Look at that. He planned it that way. So the 10 pin all by itself, even though there is wood up front. I don't think you'd want to be playing that. He could play the wood and bury it in there, but he went right after the 10 pin and got the spare. Oh, these guys are so good that they can pretty much go at it fearlessly. You and I'd be playing the wood, of course. Bigger target. Tom Hargreaves from Salem, New Hampshire writes, I enjoy the show on a weekly basis and enjoy your comments as well. I'd like to share with you a few of my childhood memories of being a pin setter in the early 50s. At seven cents a string, it was a good job at the time for a 12-year-old. Jeff finishes with four in the spare. And a 140 for a string. He was getting seven cents a string in the 50s? That's what it says. I do remember wow. a term that was yelled at me down the lanes from time to time. Have you ever heard him yell, respot? That meant respot the pins one or two may have been off the mark. And you had to respot by hand or step down on a pedal that would raise the pins and would set all the pins on their spots. That's going back a ways. Those are the good old days. He's had pins in the Methuen Bowling Alleys, also the English Social Club. Thanks for the memories. I watch every week Tom Hargraves, Salem, New Hampshire. Tom, thanks very much. Gary Carrington, will he make it? No. Mm. Four in a row without a mark for Carrington, yet he's still within striking distance. After four marks in his first five boxes, right. that's a nine box. He's at 115. So a mark here would bring him within a mark. The 3 6 10. No wood. Both bowlers started out like a house of fire. Gary makes the spare. Surrett had four marks in a row, five marks in the first six boxes. Carrington had three marks in a row, four marks in the first five boxes. Then a drought of sorts, four marks, four boxes in a row without a mark. Watch it again as he played the outside of the pin and got the good bounce off the wall. Filling the spare with six. And a 131 first string for Gary Carrington. A nine-pin lead for Jeff Surrett over Gary Carrington. We're headed to string number two. When we come back to Lita Lanes, it's Candlepin Stars and Stripes, the Tournament of Champions on WNDS-TV. This is our grudge match at Pilgrim Lanes. I had a 22-pin lead over Mike Moore, and Mike missing there has settled for a nine box, 61 through seven. And box number eight for Mike. He had to settle for a four box and a 65. Here's where I start to pile it on. Missed the shot there, missed the spare. Had to settle for an eight box. Up by 21. Begins. Up by 21. Watch this one. Watch this one. There they go. 
The strike. And I'm piling it on. Leading by what? 92 to 65 with a couple of oh, boxes. They only to gave go. you a 10 box on the score. That, that should have been, been a strike. That was a strike. We'll get yep. it corrected. <laughs> no, we won't. Gary Carrington. Isn't there a mercy rule in this? On lane 34. Ready to go. String number two. We'll get Kevin LaFond to correct that right away for next week on the score sheet. That was a strike, man. Gary, will he get it? No. Everything with the seven pin. And a 10 box. Gary was the New Hampshire State All-Events winner in 2000 and 2001. Eight WCBC titles. Now, I never checked to see what his total was for this last season, but eight as of the last check. And he's a fifth all-time winner behind Tom Olsta, Peter Flynn, Tim Lipke, and Craig Holbrook. And it was the number eight WCBC ranked bowler in the 2002-2003 season. And this is the ninth time that he's been on this year, which is the most of any bowler in the seven years that we've been doing the show, Dick. Gary bounced that one down, but he makes the shot. Legal shot, skip lob. Ball made contact with the lane before it he got to the lob line. Jeff Surrett on lane 34. Candleton Stars and Strikes on WNDS-TV, presented by the Thompson family of dealerships. McMulkin Chevrolet, Nashua Mitsubishi. Nashua Hyundai and Nashua Cadillac all in the New England Automotive Village on the Daniel Webster Highway south in Nashua. Oh, look at that shot by Jeff Surrett. What a beauty. And by Tri-State Megabucks in the games of the New Hampshire Lottery, he hit that wood perfectly. Just absolutely perfectly. Buy a ticket and just imagine. Six, seven in the spare. Got a shot at it right here. Oh, missed the head pin. Just missed the head pin. I believe earlier this year, Jeff Surratt defeated Gary Carrington to get his seating position. One thirty-one last string for Gary Carrington. He's got a ten and a spare to begin the second string. Another split. Babe's had a handful of them today, but he stayed very close to Jeff Surratt and only nine pins behind beginning this match. Oh, look at Gary! Oh, he's trying to muscle it down. It won't go. Ten box. Great try. For the legendary Gary Carrington averaging 133. Yet the uh, elusive 200 game not in his uh, portfolio yet. And came up one pin shy of a 500 triple with 499. Having bowled that fairly recently. I predict he'll have a 200 and a 500 to put on his uh, resume before it's all said and done. Got a note from Barbara McCarthy of Brockton, Massachusetts, and I think she's inquiring about Bill Muldoon, and Bill Muldoon is oh. with us today. We talked with him a couple of weeks ago in one of our taping, one of, the, one of the earlier matches. Bill, now 86 years old, retired to Florida, but came back for the Tournament of Champions, uh, a fixture in Candlepin Bowling for years and years and years. And Barbara, you're, you should be happy to know he's here. I hope you see him. Perhaps she saw the show two weeks ago. Perhaps. We, we spoke with him, so never mind. That could easily have been a strike Good for Jeff Surratt. Ball, yep. Starting with a 140 string. Missed it. Talking to Tony Zernike recently, he says when a bowler, a professional, misses the single pin, he says nine times out of ten, he'll always get it on that third ball. And case in point right there from Jeff Surratt, who missed the spare, but made the ten. Stan Boris of Lynn, Massachusetts, wrote us a note. Mr. Boris, the gentleman in question that you refer to is not who you think it is. Oh, look, 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 the dominoes do not fall. 
pretty good wood there for the 129. We come back from break. We'll share some more stats from this past season of Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Nice shot by Jeff right there for a spare. So Jeff will be working on a mark when we come back from the break. It's Carrington and Surrett head to head on the semifinals of the Tournament of Champions on Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS TV. Carrington will bowl first on lane 34 when we come back. Will it go? It continues to wobble. Still looks like it may go. <laughs> Just can't make up its mind. Looks like it'll stay up. He's being plagued by splits. Carrington is. Second one in three boxes. Look at this! Whoa! Kind of looks like the Incredible Hulk Watch when he gets this. down. Body English. Two, four, six, ten. No wood. What was the shot he made to beat Anderson? Oh, my. Was it the 6, 7, 10 or something? Something like that. Yeah, some crazy something shot. Something wider than that, actually. That was after he missed a single pin spare in the ninth frame. In the 10th yep. frame, he came back to make a split to win the match. He missed the head pin. He put six in the mark. gets into a zone. He hasn't left the pin this game. Three spares and three ten boxes as you see it again. Actually, there was a piece of wood that helped trip the uh, the pin that might not have gone down. Jeff Snoonian of Haverhill, Massachusetts writes in, I'm sitting here watching Carrington Zappi. Just heard us mention the eBay photograph of a turn-of-the-century bowling team. I was the one who bought the picture. It's currently being framed for a prominent spot in my house. Although I might bring it to Wyoming, Ohio when he takes a road trip this summer to the only Candlepin Lane west of New England. I never knew it was there. And he wants to do a feature film on Candlepin Bowling. Yeah, he's actually here today. Is he? Yep. Jeff Snoonian from he Haverhill, Massachusetts. Introduced himself uh, before we started this morning, meeting some of the bowlers that I think he'd like to include in this documentary or feature film about the game. Great. I probably want to interview you after this uh, performance you're giving on our grudge man. Uh -huh. And I'll be able to say, yeah, I knew Dick when. Well, look at this, Dick. It's tied in this game, but still in the match, the lead is nine for Jeff Surrett. Both bowlers with 73 and a ball in the sixth. Carrington looking for some bonus money right here. There it is. That's a $50 shot right there. Gary has $100 in bonus money thus far in the match. No stranger to this triple strike jackpot either. Hit it for about $1,300 bucks Correct. five, six years ago. Yeah, maybe not quite that long ago, but uh, yeah. Could history repeat itself? Dickie did it in uh, 2001, three years ago, when he defeated Mike Morgan. He won the then $1,500 top prize, hit the triple strike for $1,300, and his total winnings for the day, about $3,000 with the other bonus money worked in. Wow. Jeff Surratt put seven in the spare. Tough shot here for Jeff. Not gonna make it. He'll be open up against a Carrington strike, so things get interesting. Ten box. Talking about money, this is how the breakdown goes this year. Regular season prize money, including the mixed doubles, 15525 Tournament of champion money that uh, the boys are winning this, these five weeks, 3350 Total prize money for the year, not including bonus money, 18575 You can add several, several thousand beyond that. Much of it contributed by Alita Lanes and the bowlers' uh, entry fees. So... Probably about 25 grand in prize money won, including the bonus money this year. Big shot here for Jeff. Got to hit the head pin. Nice shot for Jeff. A big spare. 
up against the Carrington double strike. Four marks in a row for Carrington, actually. That's a nice looking spare by Jeff Surrett right there. This is what, what do we say, 575? 575 on this shot. $575 for Gary Carrington. The house gets quiet. Oh, look at this. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, my goodness. The four pin. Well, he can still get five marks in a row for more bonus money, but 575, one pin. Got $150 in bonus money in the string. Right on the head pin, straight through, breaks up the spread eagle. Just puts five in the spare. It's at 147 through nine. Even if he doesn't make this, he's in the mid-150s. He's at 152 right now. One fifty-three. One fifty-four for Gary Carrington. Now Jeff Surrett working on a spare. Boy, he deserved better good than that, ball, didn't, didn't he? he? Wow, that's tough. Put six in the spare. Crowd can't believe it either. The six, seven, eight, and nine with some wood up against the seven and the eight. That'll be an eight box. So Jeff's at 114 through nine. 31 pin deficit. Minus whatever Jeff gets in the 10th box. So Mark would bring it down to around 15 or so. He needs to break up the split. Look at this. Another tough shot coming here for Jeff Surrett. The 6, 7, 10 with wood on the deck to spray around. That's what has to happen here. Hope something flies across the deck. It oh. flew across and flew in front. Will it get it? Watch out. It won't <laughs> knock it over. It went in front, it came back, and then it snuggled up. Wouldn't take it down. No luck, no luck. Ten box for Jeff Surrett, 124. Second string for Jeff Surrett. Gary Carrington has a 21-pin lead over Jeff Surrett. We're headed to the final string. When we come back to the Tournament of Champions, it's Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS-TV from Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire. Jeff Surratt will be first to bowl. String number three. Trailing by 21 pins. Right on the head pin, right straight through it goes. So a nine for Jeff Surrett to begin the third game. This is the game he needs to make up 21 pins and then some if he hopes to win and advance to play Sean Baker for the championship next week. That gentleman right there, Jeff, is the Tournament of Champions reigning king, at least as of this moment. $800 to the runner-up today. Next week, the breakdown is $2,000 for the winner, $1,100 to the runner-up. Got a note here from Dave Grant from Keene, New Hampshire. Gentlemen, first, I'm glad there's Candlepin Bowling on TV. You guys do a great job. I tape the show every week to send to Southern Texas to my parents. I recently received a package of tapes back from my dad, and in it was the tape of this match from 1992 that he'd put in a drawer and forgotten. 
That was the day Paul Berger rolled 500 to Dave Richards 371. Dave Richards is here today. The match is just incredible to watch, and it really does not seem like he's going to hit 500 until the end. It starts out relatively uneventful through the first five boxes, with each rolling a couple of marks. Berger then runs the table with five marks in a row to a 158 to Richards 125. Berger starts the second string with five marks in a row and finishes with a 149 to Richards 119. In the third string, things start out with Berger rolling three marks in four boxes with a nine in the third box. He then pretty much runs the sheet, including a double strike, spare strike combination en route to a 193 to Richards 127. You know what? We should talk to Dave. He's uh, here. Yeah, uh, a little later on here. Yeah today if we have a couple moments and uh, ask him about that day. For the match, Berger had 24 marks and 30 boxes and earned $700 in bonus money plus $100 for hitting 400 plus $100 for hitting 500 plus $50 for being the marksman of the day. The previous Channel 5 record was 483 by Tom Olsta in the late 80s and before that Rosario Lacara held it for the longest time at 468 which he rolled the very first time he was ever on the show. <laughs> Interesting stuff from Dave Grant from Keene, New Hampshire. Dave, thanks very much. Appreciate it. And keep on bowling. That was, what, 1992, you say? Yep. We get more email about that particular day and that 500 triple from Paul Berger. We've had people send us tapes of it because neither of us actually saw it the day it happened. Jeff Surratt, will it go? Will it go? It just missed it. But he's in pretty good position. He's got some wood as a guide. Spare for Surratt in the third. That's offline. Oh, he got a good, got a break. Put six in the spare. He didn't throw a good first ball. But he got a break with the pin flying off the sidewall. And a spare for Jeff Surratt. That's a nice spare for Jeff. And he needs it to stay anywhere in the ballpark with Gary Carrington, who had a 21-pin lead going into this game. Makeable spare for Gary Carrington here. The 3-6-10. Wood between the 6 and the 10, which is a good place to be. That'll take it. <laughs> Gary's son, Matt, is a 21-year-old junior at UNH. Mike's a 14-year-old ninth grader at Timberlane. Both boys have been junior state bowling champions. Following in the footsteps of Papa. Good genetics for bowling, for sure. And uh, Babe's father and Matt's grandfather, Frank Harrington, is here today. Right through the middle of the spread eagle. This match is going to get much, much tighter now if Carrington doesn't make this. Combination of a bad fill and a possible missed spare. So he will be open. A nine box for Gary Carrington. We're going to the break, and the lead is 17 minus what Jeff Surrett puts in his spare when we come back from the break as you continue to watch the Tournament of Champions on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. From Lita Lanes in Nashua, this is WNDS-TV. Our guest here at the uh, table is Dave Richards, Dave Cookie Richards. We just read an email here a moment ago about the uh, day in 1992 when a certain Paul Berger threw a 500 against you on Channel 5. How well do you remember that day? I remember like it was yesterday. I tell you, it was, uh, it was something to be part of. Uh, on the losing note, but uh, it was just awesome bowling. Now, you were a part of history as well because you were the last bowler to ever... You, you turned the lights out on Channel 5, didn't you? Yes, I did. That's, yeah, it's a positive but negative thing because it was a great show. It was. And uh, we wish it was still going. But 
You guys have done a great job here, yeah. and uh, you've got it back going again for us. Well, thanks for talking to us today. Good to see in the audience a couple of your good buddies are out here today. Yeah, Tough to root for one of them, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. It's a great match. Right, we'll see you next year, I hope. Yeah, you betcha. Thanks, thanks Cookie. Mike. All right, Dave Richards, many-time winner here on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. All right, Jeff Surratt ready to bowl. Dave's one of the good guys he is on indeed. the Pro Bowlers Tour. Here's Jeff Surratt starting with a strike coming back from the break. Three marks in a row for Surratt. That's a $50 shot right there. More importantly, it narrows the gap. Well, the momentum has totally shifted in Surratt's favor after Carrington had uh, the double at the uh, toward the end of the second uh, string. Jeff looking for a two-bagger. Oh, he threw the ball at the pocket. And look at this. He's had a couple of really bad leaves after hitting the head pin. Now right, he's got, got some wood here just to, to play yeah, around. I don't know how good it is, though, but now, it's something. I think you play the right wood and hope that the, the ball clips the five pin and bounces over to the ten pin and take a shot at it. <laughs> he went to the right wood. Nope. Took your suggestion, didn't work out for him. Uh, I was going to go to the left, right side of the left wood, is what I was thinking. Like right there. That's what I was thinking, right oh, there. Oh, sure. Well, and that's a nine. Oh, is it a ten box? Yeah. Ten box. Eighty-two. Very even match. Sean Baker waiting to see who he'll bowl next week. Carrington right on the head pin. Gary needs a mark to take the lead back. Here's the mark right there. So he will take the lead back. Gary broke the jinx of the number four seed. First bowler in seven years to come from the number four position to win a ladder. He defeated on his way to victory to get here today Bob Anderson, John Plant, John Zappi, and Dan Ellard. Here it goes, the strike. Did you see the look on his face when he turned around, that determination? He's a bowling animal. Watch it again and watch that 10 pin. There it is, still in the corner, finally kicked out. Now Surratt back to live action. And he's got some wood that's beyond the fair play deadwood line. So Paul Willette will run down and shag the pin, get it out of the way. Our official score. Yes, sir. And you hear they're saying that a boy, Ralph, because Ralph Stewart, who was the lob line judge we've talked about, also chased the pins down. And there's an open frame, unfortunately, for Jeff Surratt. Want to acknowledge a note from Gene Graver of Fitchburg, Massachusetts. Gene, thank you very much. Nice to hear from you, and thanks for watching. Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS-TV. Ten box for Jeff Surratt. He needs to mark. Desperately needs to mark. And that's not a good first ball. Well, it's going to be three boxes in a row without a mark, and Gary Carrington works on a strike, so the momentum shift again goes back to Carrington after Jeff had a nice run early in this string. He'll go for the two on the right. Well, hoping to get a piece of that, I suppose. Didn't work out for him. Seven box. Time's running out on Surratt. Gary Carrington can really put the clincher on right now working on a strike Gary already has hundred and fifty dollars in bonus money in the match Surrett has a hundred and a quarter well, it isn't a done deal yet Carrington has to now pick up the spare 4-7-10 wood against the 10 pin And fill the strike with an eight. Well, 
if he doesn't get a mark, it's still about a 20-pin match, so Surrett will not be mathematically eliminated quite yet. All right, he's got pretty good wood right there. Mm -hmm. Check to Jeff Surrett, throws the ball right past the ninth pin, now in the tenth. Anything short of a miracle won't be enough. Well, mathematically, it's over. Gary Carrington advances to the Tournament of Champions. One seventeen third string for Jeff Surrett. Three string total, 381. Carrington already has 383. And that does it right there. There's a strike. So he's just looking for some bonus money now. Pretty solid shot by Gary. See if he can close out with a bang. And cash in on some other bonus money. Tough shot here. Five, nine, ten. There's no wood to assist him. Ooh, we almost made it. <laughs> yeah, with a skip lob on top of that. And a nine box and a 136 and a three string total of 421 to Gary Carrington. A 40 pin win over Jeff Surrett. Gary Carrington advances to the championship match against Sean Baker next week. We'll come back to talk to our bowlers when we return to Lita Lane right after this on WNDS-TV's Candlepin Stars and Stripes. Gary Carrington defeats Jeff Surrett. The final score of 421 to 381. He's a pretty tough guy, isn't he? Yeah, hard to beat. You know, he was on like he always is. What goes through your mind when you see you put a mark or two on the board and then he comes right back at you and he, he, he matches it? All he can do is get right back up and throw some more. It's tough. It's tough. Describe what it's like to bowl in front of a really charged audience. I mean, this is a big crowd and a big money match. Well, when you're doing good, it's fun. <laughs> uh, other than that, you know, you, you hear it from them. Well, it's it's all character building. You were the winner of this great tournament last year, and you came in third this year. So, you know, you'd like to have been better, but you're still a great competitor. And there's still $800 to go in Jeff's pocket, plus $125 in bonus money and our best wishes, and we'll look forward to seeing you next year. Thank you. Thank Jeff Surratt, runner-up here this afternoon, and now the bonus ball contest. Gary Carrington will pull a card out of the hat here, out of the bin, and see if we can match it up. We'll see what Gary can win some money. We have $100 in the jackpot, and Norma Bradford from Worcester, Massachusetts. Did I ever tell you that I was from Worcester? Constantly. Norma is from uh, Worcester, and she picks nine, Gary. She wants you to get a nine. Originally from Worcester, but I live in Manchester now. See if we can get a nine for Norma. Too good. Just too good. <laughs> too good. What a show off. You, should have picked you, a you couldn't get a nine. You, you, had to, you, had to, you had to get them all. Gary Carrington, uh, 421 triple, $50 for having the high string in the match, $150 in bonus money, and we're set up for a big match next week. That's right. Uh, Jeff Surrett is, a, is an excellent opponent. He's an excellent can pin bowler. Next guy coming up, uh, Sean Baker, is just as good. I bowl with them both. I know what they can do. I'm going to have to be on my game for sure. Well, let's uh, go back not too long ago when it was Sean Baker that beat you 451 to 420. So there's a little comeback time perhaps for Gary Carrington. Yes, yeah, right. I, I, 
you know. You're aware of that, of course. Right, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Jeff Soretto, and now. Payback is always fun, well, isn't it? I'm having a lot of fun. I'm, I'm telling you, this is great. I but you've been, you've been on fire. Uh, you've been on now nine times this year, which is the most anybody ever has. Three straight ladders. So you, as always, find a spot in the Tournament of Champions. Well, I don't know what to say. Uh, I've been bowling great, right? Uh, I'm putting good scores up. Those are good scores. 140 average right around. That's, just, that's hard to beat. Not, it's, so. it's, it's not chopped liver, as they say. Right. And we so have Dick a, might be able to beat you. Look for, uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> he's he's seen me in action. He's seen me I in see, action. I, threw, I saw the hammer he threw yeah. there. Well, I look forward to seeing you next week. Gary Carrington, right. thanks very thanks, much. Gary. Gary climbs the ladder to the championship match next week. And it's Sean Baker, the man who beat him not too long ago. Let's see if things turn around next week. Hope we look forward us. to seeing you as well. For Mike Morin and our entire crew, I'm Dick Lutz. From Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire, where our friends always like to remind you, 